Welcome backwards. to welcome to a segment of Shiftcast. Okay. This is a portion Matt of the says, main show. You can catch it here on the YouTube channel or got on it, Spotify. Let's get I'm right into it. Passing. All right, Michael, what, what have you done here? What, what is going on? Talk to us. Listen, listen. For about, I don't know, four months, five months last season, all we did was recap, preview, recap, preview. Boring. So we're finding new ways to talk about what happened last week. And the first thing we're doing is it's summertime. Yep. It's about 90 degrees uh, Celsius, 30 degrees Fahrenheit every day. And you know what that reminds me of being a youngin and going to summer school. So I'm taking Jens and I'm taking Hootie to summer school with me. And we are going to grade some performances from teams across oh. the Shift Summer League this season. All right. Okay. So let's get right into it, shall yeah. we? Let's talk about Gen G. Now, Gen G noted, uh, you know, powerhouse contender, world champ contender, maybe the best team in North America. Who knows? But, um, you know, they did not have uh, a smashing debut in, in, in the Shift Summer League. They did say that they had taken a little bit of a break. Yeah. Got back to practicing just a couple of days before, so we have to allow that. But they did lose some teams you don't expect them to lose to. Mm -hmm. Incorrect, right? Now, listen, Incorrect's a very good team. They got some good players. Maybe didn't get their shot, all right? Such as one of Mike, who just read this. Thank you, one of Mike, for the raid. Um, but they did get a really quality win over uh, RMC, XLG, Rattles Magic Cheese. Uh, they finished off their day with two strong performances. However, you know how it works in school, man. In school, you could take AP classes, advanced classes. You could take academic classes. You could take applied classes, right? College, university, whatever. Gen G's an AP student. Gen G is on the honor roll. They're trying to get into Harvard. They're not here to just make, go to a university, get a good job. They're trying to be summa cum laude or whatever you say, right? And it's harder to get good grades in those classes. And I got to grade them based on the merits that I know they have. And they just didn't give me that. So right. I'm giving them a D plus. I need to see a little bit more. You're supposed to be competing against the best teams in the world mm -hmm. in a month or two to go play in the world championship. That's not going to cut it. We need to step up a little bit more. I think they will, but listen, what happened happened, and it wasn't good. So I'm giving them a D plus. A D plus, okay. Yens, what are you thinking? Yens, can you hear me now? There he is. Yeah, we're so. Oh, bad. awesome. I mean, all right, right back to it. Yens, let's give. Uh, well, Gen there we go. Plus. I need to throw in some student protests over here. Okay. <laughs> I'm rebellion, rebelling against this oh. awful system that somehow still stands in the United States of America and Canada. And Canada and the UK. Yeah. So all the important How things. are you supposed to grade tests with letters? <laughs> <laughs> Who in their right mind has a list of questions or a list of topics to cover or anything that's to do with grading? List them all up, gets a total score. And I convert it into letters. Terrible. Hello. What are we doing over here? <laughs> the most normal system is out of 10. I can mm -hmm. allow out of 20. Okay. A lot of universities somehow seem to do that. But out of 10 makes the most sense. So here we go. Gen G indeed are on that honors roll. We do have honors too. And they might be going for cum laude, but they're not getting even close to that if they continue like this. Where I'm from, the one is the lowest mark you can score, the 10 the highest. So you always get like a one just for basically for writing your name correctly on the paper. So a 5.5 .5 is a passing mark. Mm. Anything above that, it's rounded up to six, of course is a passing mark. But Gen G don't deserve more than a five from me. <clears throat> it's that bad. Oh. They need to step it up. All right, well, here's what I got to say. I think both of your grading scales are trash. We've got the new and improved ideal system that Rocket League has introduced. Good, great, and amazing. The fence sitter has found his fence sitting <laughs> scale. Amazing. Uh, I mean, good. This is, this is incredible. <laughs> uh, but here, here's the thing. All right, we're talking about this is the summer league. We're giving out some grades. Gen G maybe had a little bit too much fun in their summer, in their vacation. 
They didn't uh, prepare for their first day back at school. And the results showed that was a very, very poor showing for a team of that caliber. Uh, they did regain a bit on the back half, uh, at least in, in, in day two. But they had some inexcusable losses, and I think they would agree. So the best that I could give them is a good rating on the scale of good, great, and amazing. Well, Fabulous. <laughs> now that we've we've uh, made things as confusing as possible for audio <laughs> listeners, um, let's move on to the next team. We can be a little, you know, this team is maybe the opposite of Gen G in terms of the form. Is Dignitas, all right? Mm. Uh, this is not, you know, I know there's been there you about roughly 74 different iterations of the Dignitas roster in the last yeah. calendar year. Um, but this one, this version, brings uh, core members, Evo and Arsenal, with uh, C9's uh, Zanil, or formerly C9, Zanil. He played under the Cloud9 banner in the RLCS season. And they had a great first couple days first week Easy. finishing four and two i believe they're sitting pretty in second place so in a buy position right now um getting really really quality dubs over teams like g2 uh over teams like uh, i believe they beat no they lost to rmc they beat they beat arms no they lost to rmc but you know they, they got good, good dubs and you know what this is the exact opposite this is a team i think everyone thought was just going to come in i don't think they were a lock for a lot of teams to make the, the league from the play-in uh, sure. based on just what had happened with the roster and you know our, what's going on with Ivan Arsenal and Zanil's just playing with them on short notice. Mm -hmm. But, man, they have looked fantastic. I'm loving Arsenal in a striker role. He's averaging 1.17 goals per game. Good for second in the league. Now, this is Mr. First Man himself, but he's turned into a, a shooter. Um, and then I think the play style of Zanil, who's quite defensive, really works well with two more uh, kind of pace pushing players um reminds me a little bit of that of the luna galaxy comp uh, from last season with Tox sitting back chilling while uh, chronic and atomic would go get after it so um i was really impressed by them i thought they looked fantastic uh i'm gonna give them an a a nice an easy a uh and i think that they've really established themselves as a team that can contend for a buy in the playoffs there you go. I mean, I wholeheartedly agree, especially because of the caliber of teams they've come up against, right? Mm -hmm. It's this Dignitas, Dignitas squad that you'd expect to be somewhere in that mid-range, perhaps. Um, but they've managed to close out a decent number of series. They didn't get the win against uh, Incorrect, but Incorrect came off a win against Gen G, so can't really blame them for that one. That's, that's how you score a 10 in my book. If they would have gotten that dub, but they didn't, so it's a nine for me. Yeah, I'm pretty similar. I've got them. I've got them rated as amazing, um, and and here's the reason why. I think when you consider similar to what we said about Gen G, when you consider the context, like Michael mentioned, it's kind of a last moment thing here with Zanil and Evo. I mean, at the end of the season, was on the bench. So um, you know these guys throwing them together and and kind of trying things out, and that's. You know, that's what's going to happen throughout the offseason. You're going to try out some different rosters and shuffle things around and see what works. But this, so far, has seemed really incredible. I mean, you, you outlined, they, they do have a couple losses. They have a Game 5 loss to Rattles Magic Cheese. Um, they lost in, in 4 to Incorrect. But those inconsistencies, I'm not going to say, you know, you just ignore them. But that's to kind of be expected when you have a, a, a newer roster uh, that you toss together. They've got some great wins, and they've played some really good Rocket League. So I think I'll, I'll throw them an amazing rating. All right, well, let's let's get let's move on. We got uh we're gonna switch a little bit over to Europe here and talk about LXGX Cole or Luna Galaxy Complexity, uh, CRR Atomic and Tox. Um they played this week, they went four and two. However, I don't know if you guys were watching the same team. Listen, all four and twos they're not built the same, it seems like in 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 the Shift Summer League. Uh, I was they they did what they had to do, and they deserved to, the flowers to, for doing what they had to do. But I felt like the amount of talent on the team mm -hmm. and the amount of experience on the team, it didn't look like it was all coming together. And they were winning because the other teams were weren't as good. They weren't a team that I, I walked away with feeling like they they were exceptionally good at anything. They were just not losing. Like they were playing. They were they were not losing games. They weren't winning games. That makes sense. Um. So I, I got them at a B minus. I mean, you know, you can get into a pretty good college with a B minus, but 
but you know, you're not, you're not going to Yale, you know, you're not going to Queens university in Kingston, Ontario, like some of us. All right. Right. So, I, I like, I like what you said about they need, they did what they needed to do. They are in second place in the ranking right now after week one, but just one loss and they can drop three to five places mm-hmm. in that, so in the 10 teams in league play. So they are just ahead in terms of game differential, but in terms of what they actually showed on the field, what they did in the league, I mean, they're getting a passing mark, but this is the kind of team in Dutch, we call it the six culture. You don't do anything other than <laughs> trying to culture. pass. It's a six, six culture where you just, that's just culture, culture. You don't do anything other than getting that pass mark. Nothing extra. Mm-hmm. Just coasting on what you know can get you a passing grade. And that seems to be what Luna, Galaxy, X Complexity, the first week, have been doing. But there's two more weeks in league play. There's playoffs that they will probably still quite uh, you know, comfortably get into. So they have plenty of time to get rid of that six culture. We've got a we've got a phrase over here. We say C's get degrees. C's there get you. degrees. Yeah. Listen, I lived by C's get degrees for four <laughs> long years. Me too. Me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel pretty similar. I mean, obviously, like like Michael said, with the talent on that team, you kind of expect, and I think it's fair to uh, between them and Oxygen to be those top two teams, and they are. They are there at the top, um, but. It certainly wasn't as clean as you would like. They've got a game five loss to Endpoint and a game five loss to Swadad. And those things are going to happen. You know, it's league play. You've got a lot of matches. You're not going to be flawless like we said earlier. Uh, but I do want to see a little bit more out of them. Um, I'm going to give them a middle of the road grade with a, a great rating. The most hootie hoo shit of all time. Dude. <laughs> dude, mine is the worst. Great. Part. Middle, middle of the road. This rating great. Skills terrible. <laughs> Um, all right, let's stay in. Let's stay in Europe with one of one of the most interesting sort of form wise teams. Uh, jobless three mm-hmm. zero day one, zero three day two. Yeah, right. Now, what do you make of that? What I make of it is that it's league play. Listen, if you if you're if you're a fan of a, a, a professional sports team or an esports team and franchising, you know, especially with these long ones like a baseball team or a basketball team. There's team, your team goes on streaks where they win and your team goes yeah. on streaks where they lose. And it's not really in those streaks where you learn what your team is. It's, it's in that sort of middle ground when they're fighting to get wins and, and then they're going up and down. That's kind of the level that, that, that they probably are. So I'm going to hit them with a C, you know? And you know why? Because like Hootie said, Cs get degrees. Look, they have a passing, barely a passing grade right now. Um, but it being at three and three and, and they're still firmly in the hunt and they've already shown us that they can be good enough to be a top four team and really compete for those buy spots at the top, which are quite important, right? It's, it's, it's a buy into, um, you know, the top six or the top four and that, that matters. Um, but I think, uh, we, d- I just don't know enough about this team to give them a high or a low grade yet. If they come out next week, they can go three Oh again, or they can go three again. You know, I really don't know. Yeah. So I'm going to keep it at a C. Jobless is a little bit of a mystery for me as well. They, I will bump them up to a seven. I'll say that right out of the gate. They have been losing to teams that you can expect them to lose against. They've been winning against teams that they should be winning against. Their loss against 100%, I think, is a little bit less forgivable. But yeah, it's, it's they're in a, in an average place, they're getting a seven for me out of ten. Um, but really have to see more yeah. from them to make up my mind for for a final grade. I'm, I'm going to give them the lowest grade on my scale of good. Um, I, I I expected more from this team. You know, we talked about <laughs> we talked about auction and Luna Galaxy complexity being teams that you kind of expect towards the top. I think Jobless is right there as well, and same for Resolve. I think they're frankly. Uh, lucky that they are not on this rating. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, you add Nass to the equation. I think Nass is a fantastic a fantastic talent. Um, and then, you know, on, on the back of day one, that led me to believe, hey, these guys are going to be contending for that number one and number two spot. And then they just kind of uh, fell apart. I mean, they here. could be. 
and they could be, but they they fell apart there in the second half. And and so I would like to see a little bit better consistency, um, especially. I mean, you, you mentioned you know losing to Oxygen, uh, but in, uh, also in a three zero fashion. You know, three zero to um, one hundred percent as well. And then they got one game off of endpoint. So you know they're one and nine on the day. That's not that's not what I expect from that team. I want to see them do better. I think they could do better. Um, so I, I got to give them the lowest grade at the moment. We got to talk about it, man. What is up with Nass? That fourth series win, man. It happened again. 3-0, and then he just couldn't get a fourth series win. <laughs> is that what, what it is? is it's not on? Swiss or anything. It's just the he, fourth. <laughs> he won your 2v2 tournament. How many series did he have to win? So here's the thing. Uh, as far as the consistency thing, day one, he did, him and Oli did not look very good. They did get the win, but they did not look very good. And how many um, series did they have to play to win? Uh, to win the tournament, they had to win four. I, uh, I no, <laughs> no, that's, that's not right. That's not right. They had to win three. Yeah, I was right because I thought no, I looked at your right. bracket an hour ago. Yeah, yeah, three, three. Nas, if you pay me okay. uh, four to five figures, I'll teach you how to win that fourth series. <clears throat> fourth series? I My never would have thought it's a numerical thing. Yeah, it's just a fourth series. Not top that's eight, why, just That's series. why numbers are so much better than letters. <laughs> I uh, disagree. You don't talk in numbers, okay? All right, buddy. Um, anyway, let's finish Universal. this segment off with a team that was the talk of the town going into this tournament. Um, fun. Now, fun to me, uh, talk T. Carell and Nitrous, or sorry, now Xander. For something. Um, oh, I mean, no. Sorry? No, they're one of five. They beat Gen... No, they beat oh, okay, Space okay. Station. They beat Space Station in their opening match. <clears throat> to me, jobless the way I... I'm oh, sorry, jobless. Fun the way I... Graded them as the opposite of Gen G, where it's like, you know, fun. Maybe they've been they've been slackers. You know, maybe they just you, you know, just getting them to show up for school was a was a win back in the day, right? But <laughs> they've now, been absent a lot lately. Yeah, they've been absent a lot lately. They haven't been there. They've been prioritizing things. You know, all that stuff. But watching them play the last that first week they were very competitive they got a win over a great team a team that's currently top of the standings would be undefeated if they didn't beat them uh and they didn't look out of place and i think when you looked at a lot of team predictions uh whether it was through cody sheet or through the ifc is that's what is that what it's called yeah yep ifc uh tournament that you guys can actually go register now if you go onto our twitter page it'll be there um discord Sorry, Discord, it'll be there. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people had them going like 0 and 18 or like 1 and 17. And that, listen, 1 and 17 is still on the table. I'm not saying it's not, but, you know, the fact is, is that they've looked like they were in series, that they belong to be, they yeah. belonged in the shift summer league where I think a lot of, t- a lot of people thought that they had just kind of, one of their players had a peak day and now they're going to just lose. Um, so to me, I'll give them a C plus. I still can't give them like a B or an A because they didn't, they won one series, but they got a really, really quality win. And they looked like a team that could have easily been like three and three or, or, or two and four. It wasn't that they were getting shellacked in every one match. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I know the expectations are lower for a team like Fun, right? They're not coming in as one of the favorites. They're coming in as exciting prospects. They did make the planes, they went through the planes in the upper bracket, I believe. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. So they kind of did put some expectations on the table. And then there is one skill that they severely seem to be lacking. And that is closing out series. These are best of fives. They're not best of sevens. You can close out the series in three games. And even though they made some great plays, they, you know, came out of the gates hot sometimes, they only managed to close out that first series win. If that's all they've gotten, and you just go one in five, that's not a passing grade, even for a team like Fun. They've, there's so much promise in that team, but they need to show it a little bit too. So that's a five for me. I'm going to give them a, a middle-of-the-road grade as well with great. No. Um, I think the one in five record, uh, like Jens is describing, is is it looks worse than it really is. They've got some wins. They've been competitive. You know, a couple or a few of these series have gone to five. Um, they have definitely, yeah. in my opinion, performed at, at least 
a smidge above expectations. Um, I've been excited to watch them play. And I think in general, there, there, you know, there were not many people thinking that they were going to win four or five series. You know, I think for the most part, people thought that the fun squad and the incorrect squad are, are probably going to be on the lower side of things. Um, and both, while obviously incorrect has gotten a couple more wins, both I think have have shown, like Michael said, that hey, they belong here. They may not get the same amount of wins, and and unfortunately, if they don't close out series, you know, they they may fun may be stuck on one win the whole time. But they have been competitive. They kept the series close, and and I think that is um, ultimately uh, that's, that's something to build confidence on for a team of that caliber. So fun, they're going to get that great rating for me. I love how Jens was like, they get a five. They failed. They did not get a passing grade. And then he was like, so one yeah, basketball. I agree. They were great. <laughs> <laughs> they were great. Um, but yeah, that, that concludes. It's better than good. It's, it's better than good. That concludes uh, this class. We'll be back probably next week for some more class. So keep your thinking caps on. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe we will align our grading scale. Perhaps. I don't think we're moving Yance off this. I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm good with the numbers too. I'm willing to concede. My my system is trash, is what I'm saying. <laughs> now you have we'll to use have it in practice. This. You can see how much it actually sucks. <laughs> I mean, how good it is. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you for tuning in to He's low. He's low. You can catch the full episode here on the YouTube channel or on Spotify. Yeah, no, catch you next yeah, no, time. I'm bummed. I'm bummed. Good comes, hoodie.